This is gonna sound ridiculous, but one of the most common psychiatric interventions I implement isn't a stimulant. It isn't an antidepressant. It isn't even a psychotherapy technique. It's iron supplementation. And here's the uncomfortable part. You can have normal blood tests and still have a brain that's iron starved. And if that brain is iron starved, your dopamine signaling can be compromised, which means attention, motivation, sleep, and cognitive control can all wobble. So if you've ever thought my ADHD meds worked, then stopped. My brain is foggy, but my bloods are fine. I'm tired, wired, restless at night. My legs won't stop moving. There's a missing element worth considering. And yes, women are more likely to be missed, partly because how we interpret ferritin reference ranges. Stay with me, because in this video, I'll show you why iron is a dopamine molecule in disguise, why serum iron is not equal to brain iron, why ADHD and restless leg syndrome, RLS, are frequently linked, and the ferritin trap that can quietly underdiagnose iron deficiency in women. Here's the issue. The way most people think, ADHD is a dopamine problem, so we treat dopamine. The way the brain often works is that dopamine depends on raw materials, and iron is one of the key raw materials in the synthesis of dopamine. So I'm gonna take you through a simple framework. One mechanism, what iron actually does within dopamine synthesis. Two, mismatch, where your bloods can look normal while the brain isn't. Third, the clinical pattern, ADHD plus restless leg syndrome plus sleep fragmentation. Four, ferritin politics, why reference ranges can mislead, especially in women. And practical takeaways, what to ask, what to look for, and how to think. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist and founder of PsychScene. As an educator, one of the key aspects I incorporate in training is to ensure that we rule out medical conditions. And this video is about one key deficit, the iron deficit and its impact on ADHD and sleep. So let's get started. If you only remember one enzyme from this video, remember this, tyrosine hydroxylase. It's the rate limiting step in dopamine synthesis. The first step, iron is a cofactor. No iron means that the enzyme doesn't run at full capacity. Dopamine synthesis can suffer. That matters because dopamine is not just about pleasure or reward. Dopamine is about signal to noise control, filtering the irrelevant, what we're trying to do in ADHD treatment. Cognitive energy allocation, effort, initiation, persistence. Motor regulation, restlessness, drive, inhibition. Sleep, wake, gating, especially via circadian rhythms. So when someone has cognitive symptoms that don't fully make sense or don't fully respond, iron should be on the psychiatrist's mental checklist. But here's the twist, serum iron isn't necessarily the same as brain iron, and ferritin can mislead. See, the brain is behind a border, the blood-brain barrier, which regulates what gets in. So you can have normal hemoglobin, normal serum iron, even a ferritin that doesn't ring alarm bells, and still have low brain iron availability. This shows up clinically in disorders where brain iron biology matters, and one of the clearest examples is restless leg syndrome, RLS. In RLS research, a recurring theme is brain iron deficiency, sometimes reflected by low CSF ferritin and impaired iron handling into specific neural systems, including dopamine-related regions. And that's why as clinicians, we must stop thinking, blood test normal, iron's fine. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not, and that matters. Because the price of missing it is a patient who gets labeled treatment-resistant, non-adherent or complex, whilst the physiology was highlighting an elephant in the room. So now let's plug this into ADHD treatment. So what is RLS? Very quickly, it's usually an unpleasant, uncomfortable sensation in the legs, usually occurs closer to bedtime in the evening as a person's trying to go to bed. It's usually worse at rest, and some relief is obtained with moving the legs. This can be often misdiagnosed as akathisia or even agitation. One of the key differentiators is the timing. This tends to occur towards the latter half of the day, which I'll touch on later. So kids and adults with both ADHD and restless leg syndrome can show worsening attention across the day, irritability and mood lability, 
episodes of bursts of hyperactivity, academic underperformance, daytime fatigue with nighttime activation, and a behavioral profile that looks like ADHD, but it's partly sleep driven. Here's a clinical pattern I'd like you to recognize. ADHD symptoms plus sleep that never restores plus nighttime restlessness. Think about RLS, periodic limb movements, restless sleep phenotypes, and think iron. Because a sleep disruption doesn't just coexist, it can amplify the cognitive phenotype. Now I've covered ADHD and sleep in more detail in this video here. So the question is why does RLS worsen at night? This is where we have the circadian dopamine story. You see, dopamine isn't flat across 24 hours. It's under circadian regulation. Dopamine synthesis, transport, receptor signaling, these systems oscillate. In simple terms, dopamine signaling tends to be stronger in the day and then lower at night. That's normal. But if your system is already running on limited resources like insufficient iron availability, the nighttime dip can expose the weakness. So RLS can be conceptualized as a disorder where circadian changes in dopaminergic function interact with iron vulnerability, producing the hallmark pattern. Worse at rest, worse in the evening, relief with movement, sleep fragmentation, and a morning second wind that makes no sense if you're sleep deprived. That's why some patients describe feeling exhausted, but activated. The sort of wired, tired phenotype. And once we see it, we can start recognizing it everywhere in psychiatry because restlessness isn't always anxiety. Agitation isn't always mood disorder. Insomnia isn't always stress. Sometimes it's to do with legs. Sometimes it's about dopamine timing. Sometimes it's iron. And talking about iron, let's talk about the ferritin problem, especially in women. So here's the paper, Sex, Lies and Iron Deficiency Anemia. This is a provocative line of argument in hematology that some laboratory ferritin reference ranges contribute to underdiagnosis of iron deficiency in women. Why? Because ferritin reference ranges are not the same thing as optimal function for a specific brain body context. Ferritin is also an acute phase reactant, meaning inflammation and stress physiology can push it up, masking depleted stores. And women are disproportionately exposed to iron depletion risk through menstrual blood loss, pregnancy and postpartum depletion, dietary patterns, absorption issues, and chronic inflammatory states that muddy ferritin interpretation. So you can end up with this situation. A woman has fatigue, brain fog, poor attention, sleep disruption, maybe even RLS symptoms, but gets told your ferritin is in range. And she might walk away thinking it's psychological or worse, she blames herself. This is where it's important for clinicians to recognize the interaction between not just neurotransmitters and psychiatric disorders, but also core elements like iron. So a quick recap on when should you think iron. Here are the patterns. One, ADHD symptoms plus non-restorative sleep. Two, evening restlessness or can't keep legs still. Three, insomnia that feels physical, not cognitive. Fourth, irritability and emotional volatility out of proportion to events. Fifth, stimulant response that's partial, inconsistent, or wears off in a confusing way. Six, women with chronic fatigue, cognitive fog, and borderline ferritin interpretations. And number seven, treatment resistant cognitive symptoms across diagnoses. And here's the nuance. This is not about iron fixes everything. This is where iron acts as a missing piece within other treatments. So if you remember only one thing from this video, it's this. When you're faced with a patient with ADHD or cognitive dysfunction, don't simply ask which diagnosis is it. Also ask what raw materials does the circuit require? And remember this, a normal serum panel does not guarantee normal brain iron stores. And ferritin interpretation, especially in women, can lead to quiet under recognition of iron deficiency states. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, and you're watching the Dr. Rege channel. If you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and share it with someone who might benefit from this. And if you're a clinician and you want deeper structured training, then don't forget to check out academy.psychscene.com. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until next time, stay curious. Bye-bye.